Hello, my name is Nestle Benoit with Transflora Real Estate School. And today we will be doing some contract questions. Contract questions represent about 12% of your Florida State exam, a very good category to master before sitting for your exam. So without any delay, let's jump into some questions. The first question, a broker who has brought a ready, willing, and able buyer to a seller who agrees to the terms of a sales contract. Okay, it's always good practice to read the question twice. Make sure that you understand what is being asked before looking at the answer choices. And then also review the answer choices and try to see if there's any obviously wrong answers. Usually the question provides one or two wrong answers to throw you off. And if you could find those quickly, you could eliminate them and have a better chance of choosing the right answer. So let me reread the question. A broker who has brought a ready, willing, and able buyer to a seller who agrees to the terms of a sales contract. Okay, this sounds like a promise that the broker would make to a seller in a listing contract. So the seller promised to pay a commission. The broker promises to find a ready, willing, and able buyer. So let's leave, read the answer choices. Answer A, earn a commission at that point. Yeah, that sounds correct. Let's see if there's any other answer choices that are more correct or sounds better. Answer B, earn a commission even if the contingency in the contract have not been met. Well, if contingencies have not been met, then you haven't provided the seller with an able buyer. Therefore, I could eliminate answer B. Answer C, does, does not earn a commission unless the sale closes. That sounds correct. Why would you get paid if, 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 the, if the property doesn't sell? However, per your listing contract, it doesn't have to close in order to earn a commission. All you have to do as, an, as a broker agent is provide the seller with a willing, ready, and able buyer. And your job is done. For, for example, the seller may say, hey, you know what? I don't want to sell my house anymore. But you have provided them with a buyer. Therefore, you have earned your commission. So answer C is incorrect. Answer D does not earn a commission if the buyer and seller agrees to rescind the contract. Again, you have done your job. You have earned your commission by providing the seller with a, with a ready, willing, and able buyer. Therefore, the only answer that makes sense for this question is answer A, earn a commission at that point. Next question. A good example of a unilateral contract is Although a short, but let's get in the habit of reading the question a second time. A good example of a unilateral contract is unilateral. An example of unilateral, unilateral contract would be, for example, let's say you lost your cat. It snuck out the house and now your cat is missing. And you go around posting signs in the neighborhood saying, anyone who finds and returns my cat to me, I'll pay them $1,000. Now, as your neighbor, I can go out and look for this cat and bring it to you. And upon delivery, you'll pay me $1,000. However, I am no under no, no obligation to do anything. I don't have to go out and look for this cat. Therefore, only there's only one promise, the promise to pay you $1,000 upon delivery. That is, that is an example of a unilateral contract. So let's look at these answer choices and see what if, if, we, if we see a unilateral, unilateral contract. Answer A, an option to purchase. Now, an option to purchase, that sounds like the right answer and it means I don't have to purchase, but if I want to, I can purchase. Sounds like, sounds like the right answer. Let's look at the other choices. 
And question answer B, a listing agreement. Well, we know a listing agreement is between a seller and broker and a seller promises to pay a commission and the broker promised to find a ready, willing, and able buyer. So that sounds like a bilateral contract because there's two sides, two promises. So I can eliminate answer B as an answer. Choice C, a personal service contract. Uh, again, that's between a customer and the person providing the service. A listing, a listing agreement is an example of a personal service agreement. Therefore, if answer B is wrong, answer C is wrong. So we can cross that out. A sales contract between a buyer and seller. Promise to buy, promise to buy, promise to sell. Again, another bilateral contract. So and in this for this question, answer A, an option to purchase is the best answer. Next question. A protection period clause in an exclusive listing provides that. A protection period clause in an exclusive listing provides that. Well, we know it's the listing contract and there's a protection period. So someone's protected. Most likely it would be the broker since it's a listing contract and they want to make sure they're, they get paid. So let's see if there's any answer choices that, that that's similar to that. Answer A, the owner is protected from all liabilities arising from the agent's actions performed within the agent's scope of duty. Well, the owner is protected here. I was looking for something with the agent or broker being protected. I'm not gonna rule that out quite yet, but let's look to see if there's a better answer choice that protects the agent. The agent has a claim to a commission if the owner sells or lease to a party within a certain time following the listing expiration. Okay, so this one says that the agent or the broker has a claim to commission. So it protects the broker commission. That sounds like the right answer, but let's look at the last two and see if there's a better answer choice. Answer C, agents are entitled to extend a listing agreement term if the transaction is imminent. We, we can rule out answer C because listing agreements, you cannot extend a listing agreement. Once they expire, they expire. Now you can sign a new listing agreement, but that's a new listing agreement and the, and you, the, the seller has to agree to it. So we can eliminate answer C. Answer D, an owner is not liable for a commission if a prospective customer delays in completing an acceptable offer. I, I don't see who's being protected because if you don't, you only earn a commission when you have an offer, acceptable offer. So yeah, I will eliminate answer D. It sounds good, but it doesn't make any sense. So going back to A and B, I like answer B as the correct answer because it protects the agent. It protects for a claim to commission. Meaning that if someone, if you if you your listing expires and someone and the owner or seller sells the property after it expires you are entitled to a commission. So answer B is my answer choice. An important legal characteristics of an option to buy agreement is that an important legal characteristics of a option to buy agreement is that, well, we know the option to buy means it's a unilateral contract which means that there's only one promise. So let's review the answer choices to see if we can find an answer that shows one promise. The potential buyer, the option is obligated to buy the property once the option agreement is completed. Well, we know that an option to buy, we're only, the, the option is, 
you could buy, but you're not obligated to buy. So I don't like answer A as an answer choice. So I'm going to cross that out. Answer B, the optioner must perform if the option E takes the option, but the option E is under no obligation to do so. That sounds like exactly what we're looking for. The option to buy, but no obligation to do so. so but let's look at answer C and D if, these, if, C, if there's a better answer choice. C, the contract can be executed at no cost to the option E. That's incorrect because it costs money for the option to buy. So we could eliminate answer C. It's a bilateral agreement. And we know that's wrong because options are unilateral agreements. Therefore, going back to answer B, the optioner must perform if the option E takes the option, but the option E is under no obligation to do so. Answer B is the correct answer. A contract may be defensively terminated without damage if, let's reread, a contract may be defensively terminated without damage if, well, to terminate a contract, let's say buyer and seller, they have, they're ready to close on the property and a natural disaster happens and the house burns down or a hurricane blows it away. Therefore, the seller can't sell the house because it no longer exists. It's impossible for him to sell something that's not there. And vice versa, you can't make a buyer buy something that no longer exists. So I'm looking for some of the answer choices that's impossible, something that's impossible to perform. So reviewing answer A, is it is abandoned by one party? No, abandonment does not equal impossible. Therefore, answer A is incorrect. Answer B, it is impossible to perform. That sounds like the right answer. But let's look at answer C and D just to see, make sure that there's not a better answer. Is it deemed to be valid? It is deemed to be valid. If it's valid, why are we, why are we trying to terminate? without consequences. So yes, answer C is incorrect. Both parties breach its terms. A breach by both parties does not terminate the contract. There might be consequences, but it does not terminate the contract. Therefore, no, D is incorrect. So th the best answer choice is B. It is impossible to perform. A prospective home buyer submits a signed offer to buy a house with the condition that the seller pays financing points at closing. The seller disagrees, crosses out the point clause, then signs and returns the document to the buyer. At this point, assuming all other contract validity items are in order, the status of the offer is. Okay, let's reread, make sure we understand the question. A prospective home buyer submits a signed offer to buy a house with the condition that the seller pays financing points at closing. The seller disagrees, crosses out the clause, then signs and returns the document to the buyer. At this point, assuming all other contract validity items are in order, the status of the offer is. So we have a document that was signed by both parties with some minor changes and the question is asked, what is the status of that original offer? We, and we know in real estate, as soon as you change any item on the contract, it becomes a counter offer. But, but, but we're, we're being, being, but the question is asking, what is the status of the original offer? So let's go through the answer choices. Answer A, an accepted offer therefore a valid contract. And answer A is incorrect because we know that the seller made the changes. He crossed the, he crossed the point clause out. Therefore, the seller is actually sending back a counter offer to the buyer. So that is incorrect. Answer B, an invalid contract. 
Well, there was never a contract to begin with. So answer B is incorrect. We had an offer, submitted an offer, but there's, there is no contract that has, there is no contract because both parties didn't have, didn't yet meet, have a meeting of the minds and agree. Answer C, a counter offer. Well, the seller did sign and send back the offer to the buyer. So there is a counter offer, but the question asks is ask, what is the status of the, of the offer? And answer D, an invalid offer. That is the answer, answer D. Since the seller crossed, crossed out and signed and sent back, he is now sending a counter offer. The original offer is now invalid. Answer D is the correct answer. Okay, just a couple more questions to go. In the event of a buyer's default, a provision for liquidating damage in a sales contract enables a seller to, let's reread, make sure we understand. In the event of a buyer's default, a provision for liquidated damages in a sale contract enables sellers to, well, we're talking about a default and there's a provision in the sales contract for liquidated damages. So basically if the buyer does not perform, the seller gets this amount. And you, this is something that you will see when, when you start practicing real estate. And it's usually the amount of the deposit. Hence, that's why a bigger deposit is a stronger contract because the, the seller knows that you're, you're willing to risk that much money if you do not close. So the bigger the amount, the more likely you are to close. So we want to see if there are any answer choices that make sense, that, that shows that, hey, I can get this money if you default. Answer A, sue the buyer for anticipated down payment. That's an obviously wrong answer because what down payment? How do you know it's not a cash deal? Does, this answer doesn't make, doesn't make sense, so we could rule that out right, right away. Answer B, force the buyer to a quiet claim equitable title. Again, this does not make sense. The buyer default, we're not giving the property to the buyer. So it, again, answer B does not make sense at all. Okay, so we're down to C and D. C, sue the buyer for all liquid assets lost as a result of the default. That, that kind of makes sense. However, the provision in the contracts gives a stated amount. So, so let's see if the answer D is, is, is better. Claim the deposit as relief for the buyer's failure to perform. Absolutely correct. And this does happen in real estate. So let's remember this answer, answer D. Claim the deposit as relief for the buyer's failure to perform. We have another fun question. Looks like it's talking about options again. I mean, I'm just banging away on these option questions. A tenant exercise an option to buy a condominium. The landlord agrees, but raises the agreed price by $3,000, claiming financial distress. The landlord does, however, offer the tenant two months of free rent before closing as an offset. Which of the following is true? Okay, so let's reread, make sure we understand before looking at the answer choices. A tenant exercise an option to buy a condominium. The landlord agrees, but raises the agreed price by $3,000, claiming financial distress. The landlord does, however, offer the tenant two months of free rent before closing as an offset. Which of the following is true? Well, we have an option. So basically it says that tenant has an option to buy. They, they exercise, but now the landlord wants, us to, wants to raise the price. That is, that you can't do that. I mean, you just can't do that. You, you already have an agreement in place. You can't change the agreement unless both parties agree to it. Meaning that, meaning the scenario 
cannot be forced by the landlord, but they can agree to do so. So let's look at the answer choices and see which of the following are true. The tenant can force the sale at the original term. That sounds like the right answer because again, the landlord can't raise the price, but the tenant can buy at the original at the at the original agreed upon price. So that sounds like it could be the right answer. Let's look at the other answer choices. Answer B: The landlord has taken a fully legal action which the tenant must abide by. Answer B is absolutely incorrect. We already know we have a contract in place. And you can't change it one-sidedly. The option is no, and the option E may reclaim any option money paid. Sounds right, but again, what makes the option no? Absolutely not. Let's let's cross out C. That is that is absolutely the wrong answer. And for D, the landlord must offer sufficient free rent to equal 3,000 price increase. Again, we cannot change the terms of the original contract unless both parties agree. So answer D is also incorrect. Answer A is the only right answer. The tenant can force the sale at the original terms. A seller immediately accepts a buyer's offer, but waits eight days before returning the accepted document to the buyer. Meanwhile, the offer has expired. Which of the following is true? Okay, let's reread, make sure we understand what's going on again. A seller immediately accepts a buyer's offer, but waits eight days before returning the accepted document to the buyer. Meanwhile, the offer has expired. Which of the following is true? So seller accepts an offer. However, it does not return the documents for eight days. The offer has expired and we want to know this current status. That's what the question was, which of the following is true? Well, we know in real estate, before we look at the answer choice, we know in real estate that in order for a contract to be valid and a, a real estate contract to be valid, it must be in writing. Therefore, if you don't have it in writing, there is no contract. So let's go through the answer choices. The buyer is bound to the contract since it was accepted immediately. True, it was accepted. However, with no documentation, there's no proof of a contract. So I would rule out A as, as being wrong. The buyer has no obligation to the seller whatsoever. I, that sounds like the right answer to me because it was accepted, but I have no contract in hand. Eight days has passed. To me, I, I, there's no contract as, as the buyer. So I like answer B thus far, but let me review C and D. The buyer may not rescind the expired offer. It's, it, again, answer, the buyer doesn't have to rescind because he never read it. There is, there is, there it, it has already expired. Once it already expired, he doesn't have a contract. So he doesn't need to rescind since there is an expiration expiration date. The seller may sue for specific performance. Absolutely not. There is no contract. Real estate must be in writing, never return the documents. Therefore, there is no contract. Answer B is the only answer that makes sense. The buyer has no obligation, no obligation to the seller whatsoever. Last contract question for today. Yay. An unscrupulous investor completes a contract with a buyer to sell a property the investor does not own. The sale contract for this transaction. Hmm. Let's reread that again. An unscrupulous investor completes a contract with a buyer to sell a property the investor does not own. This contract for this transaction is, well, 
the only person that can sell a property is the owner. Period. It's the owner. Not the broker, not the agent, not an investor. The only person that could legally sell a property is the owner. For example, even the listing contract, you don't, you're not saying you're going to sell this house. You're saying you're going to provide a willing and ready buyer, ready, able buyer. It doesn't say I'm going to sell this house. No, you, the owner's going to sell the house. You're just going to find a buyer for them to sell it to. So not even real estate agents sell houses. This is something important to, to think about. So again, reviewing the answer choices, the sale contract for this transaction is voidable. Is, is voidable mean that it's valid, but it could be voided. No, it's not valid at all because the investor does not own the property. So answer A is, is out. Must be in writing. Sounds like a right, right answer, right? All, all real estate transactions must be in writing, but it's not answering the question because the investor does not have the right to sell. So answer B is incorrect. It's void. Absolutely the right answer. It's not a valid contract. And answer D, just to, just to make sure, is illegal yet potentially enforceable. Absolutely not. Answer C is the correct answer is void so that's it for today i'll be back posting more questions and answers feel free to contact me anytime i'll be happy to answer individual questions you may have i will have information below where you can follow like and contact me thank you